Hi there, so I'm back again, Marcelo Vieira. If you're watching this video on YouTube and still don't know me, welcome to my channel. So go ahead, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to never miss another update because here I'll always be bringing some of the most helpful WordPress tutorials to you. In this tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to add a Google map without using plugins and without the need of an API key. Well, first of all, I have to make it clear that my intention here is to teach you how to add a map within a PHP template file of a WordPress theme, okay? In some of my courses, I use uh, those template files to build the theme's homepage. If you're watching this video in one of my courses, you should already know that. Actually, that's one of the many ways to create a homepage in a WordPress theme. If you're watching this video on YouTube, you can get more info in the YouTube card showing above. So just to make it very clear, it's not just about adding the map's iframe on a page, on a post, or on a widget, okay? Because anyone can do that. You just go over to Google Maps, uh, find the address uh, you want to use, share the iframe code, and then add the custom HTML block in the editor and paste the code there. However, doing the same in a PHP template file is different. You have to take into consideration uh, the fact that uh, the average theme user doesn't have enough knowledge to access and manipulate the PHP template file most of the times. And then it will also be interesting if you allow the user uh, to change the location of the map without needing to access the PHP file. In some of my courses, I teach how to do it without using plugins, although I teach in a way that uh, you still need to get an API key from the Google Maps platform for the map to show up. For some reason, I simply ignore the fact that uh, there is an even easier way to do the same thing in which no API key is required. That's what I intend to teach you here today. So this will be very useful both for those who are already enrolled in my courses and for those who are watching this video on YouTube and don't know my teaching style yet. By the way, if you like this tutorial, you can check out some links in the video description where you can enroll with a huge discount. Well, uh, we can manage the map in a very simple way. And we're gonna use the WordPress theme customizer, a very powerful native WordPress API. If you don't know what this API is all about and uh, you're watching this video on YouTube, check out the video in the YouTube card above as well. So, okay then, uh, first of all, let's find uh, where in the WordPress template files we'll be calling this map. In my case, I have a template file called pagehome.php and this file here is actually displaying my homepage. So within this file, I have an HTML section with the class of map, and this is where the map will stay, okay? Now we just have to go over to, to Google Maps and find some address to put on the map. Well, I'm here on Google Maps, so I'll look for the address for that famous museum, for example, in Paris. One important thing is that you have to apply a zoom to the map until it looks the way you want it to be. Because the code you'll be embedding will be different and will vary according to the zoom and other features you apply to it. For example, a code for a standard map is different from the code of a satellite image. You can see an example in the URL itself. So, see it? You can see it changes here uh, if I choose satellite, for example. Oh, let me go back to, uh, to how it was before. So next I'll click here on share, then on embed a map, and I will copy the iframe code it's providing. And next, just paste the iframe in the space reserved in the template file. You can also take this opportunity and also make some small adjustments to the code. For example, I'll change the width to 100% and the height to 350 pixels. So let me save this. And now looking at the home page, you can see uh, now I have the map here. The advantage is that the map is responsive, it uses no plugins and doesn't need an API key to be displayed. But so far there's nothing new, okay? You can get the same result if you paste the iframe in a post, in a page, in a widget, 
but we go a bit further and we need it okay because the code for the iframe is actually within a file so uh, how can someone who doesn't know how to write code be able to modify it later in my opinion the best tool to solve this problem is the theme customizer in this video, I'm not going to give you many details about the customizer code itself, okay? Uh, so if you're watching this video on YouTube, you can take a look at the list of suggested videos to understand in detail how the code works, okay? If you are enrolled in one of my courses, there is a whole section just to explain how the customizer works, all right? Basically, what we're gonna do is create a custom configuration field that the user will be able to edit by accessing the appearance menu Customize option. So the whole idea is uh, we're gonna build a simple text field for the user to change the location code, right? We'll start by creating a file for the customizer inside our themes folder. So we're gonna name this folder ink. And the file itself will be called customizer.php. Now for the file to be recognized by WordPress, we just need to add a require once to the functions.php file like this. And we use the get template directory function to get the path to the themes folder, uh, this one over here, okay? And concatenate all of this to the string forward slash ink forward slash customizer.php. Don't forget the training slash, all right? It's crucial here. And inside the new file, we'll add the following code. So let's start uh, with the PHP opening tag. You don't need to close it, all right? Then we want to create a function called, for example, um, learn wp underscore customizer. Here we pass as a parameter an object called wp underscore customize. Inside the function, this object WP customize will help us call the add section method to create a new section in the customizer, another method called add setting to create a new setting, uh, which is uh, the object that goes between the user and the database, and the last one, the add control method to create a new control, which uh, to put it simply is just a field. Each of these methods has its own arguments. I will not explain each of them now. You can, if you want, see more details in the video I have already mentioned twice today, all right? So let's go ahead. First, uh, this WP customize will call the add section. We have the first parameter, uh, that is the section ID. Let's call it here sec underscore map. Then we have an array. And here inside we have two parameters, title, let's call it map, and description, uh, let's put it like this, map, section. Now to create the setting, uh, we call the add setting method. The first parameter is also the ID, but now uh, the one of the setting. Let's call it set underscore address. Then we have an array. And here inside we have three parameters. First one is type. So the type of the setting here is theme underscore mod default. I want to pass here an empty string. And the last one is sanitize underscore callback. This is a function that sanitizes, uh, I mean, uh, it cleans the value that the user passes in the field. In the case of a text field, I use the sanitize text field function. And finally, we'll create the control, which is the text field itself. We call here the add control method. We start here with the ID of the setting, which is this one here set underscore address uh, this is because we always need to bind a setting with a control wordpress needs to know uh, to which setting each control belongs to the control is the field itself and the setting is the object that cleans the data given by the user and send it to the database right we pass an array 
And here we need four arguments. First one is label. Let's call it address. Description. I'm going to type a description for the field. Section. Here I specify uh, to which section this control belongs to, otherwise WordPress will not know in which section this control has to appear. Uh, later in this video, you'll see all of these values displayed in the admin, right? And last, we have the type argument for the type of field. In this case, it's a text field. So we type in here, text. Finally, we pass our function to the add action. First, the name of the action hook, customize underscore register. And then we just copy and paste our function's name. This will make our field available in the customizer. Now we can get information from the user and save it to the WordPress database. Now let's go to the admin. If we go over to appearance, customize, we will see a new section with the name of map, which is the title we gave to the section. And if we open it, we see the new field created by the customizer. It's here with the label, the description, and it's a text field. Well, now uh, let's think for a while. What kind of information will the user be able to enter here to change the map? Well, let's go back to the template file. Uh, as you can see here, um, the information related to the map address is stored in this field called PB. So here we got PB equals something. All the code that you generate in Google Maps will have this format here. You can't that. We can, of course, use this in our favor. So um, every time the user wants to pass a new address, they just need to copy the code from the Google Maps and extract from it only the string that comes after this PB equals, all right? For example, this long string here. For the techies, I will leave a more in-depth explanation uh, for the PB parameter in the video description or in the extra material of this lesson. So what I'm going to do here at first is um, I'm going to go back to Google Maps and look for another address. I'm going to copy the code. Remove this big string here after this PB equals and paste it into my new field. So I'll hit publish. Okay, now it's saved in the database and we can recover the code in the template file. So let's go back to the file. I'm going to delete this excerpt here from the previous map and I'll make this whole thing dynamic. First, I open the PHP tags here. This time I open and close it. I do an echo and I call the field using the get theme mod function. And here inside I need to paste uh, the name of the setting, the, the theme mod relative to the field I created. Just to finish off, I'll wrap all this inside a WordPress security function called s underscore html. One of these days, I'll come back here to explain how these escaping functions work, all right? I'll save this file. Now, if I go back to the home page, reload the page, and now I have the map for the new address. Uh, let's do the same test in the customizer. I'm going to reload the page. Let me go back again to the field. You know what? I'll get a new address for this test. Now, if I paste it here, You see that the map has changed. Cool, isn't it? It's very cool. <laughs>
and we achieved this result without the use of plugins and without an API key. Fantastic. <laughs> well guys, that's all I had for today. And I hope that those who like to create WordPress themes without depending on third-party tools must have enjoyed this video a lot. So I hope you liked it. If you are watching this video on YouTube, don't forget to give your thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and leave your comments. Also, don't forget to check out my courses with more than 18,000 students enrolled only on Udemy. You get a huge discount if you enroll using the link in this video. And don't forget to check my new book, The Web Developer's Guide to WordPress as well. All the links are in the video description just below. So catch you guys in my next video. See ya.